In 1776, the American Declaration of Independence granted citizens of the United States of America the inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. However, the hundreds of thousands of Africans brought to America as slaves and their descendants were not counted as citizens. In 1865, the North won the Civil War and passed the 13th Amendment outlawing slavery. Three years later, African Americans were granted US citizenship, but centuries of disadvantage meant black Americans were still in economic servitude. One man aimed to change all that. The son of a slave, Booker T. Washington, saw education as the key to black success. He funded a network of educational institutions with the help of wealthy philanthropists. However, black America's march towards equality was viewed with suspicion by many Southern whites. In anonymous white robes, pointy caps, brandishing pseudo-Christian symbols, white supremacist organization the Ku Klux Klan struck fear in the heart of black America by using tactics such as beatings and murder to intimidate those who call for civil rights. The flaming cross became a terrifying symbol of intolerance. To further undermine racial equality, governments in the South enacted a series of infamous laws that mandated separate facilities for black and white. Under these Jim Crow laws, the white facilities were always better, and blacks remained second-class citizens. One particularly irksome law obliged black people to give up their seat to white passengers on buses in Montgomery, Alabama. On December the 1st, 1935, 42-year-old seamstress Rosa Parks decided not to give up her seat to a white person. She wasn't the first person to make such a protest, but her arrest on that day came to symbolize the birth of the modern civil rights movement. The High Court ordered the Southern states to allow black students into whites-only schools, and in 1957, nine black teenagers braved death threats to become the first African Americans to attend Little Rock Central High in Arkansas. There were such fears for their safety that Marines were called in to protect them. As the 50s came to an end, momentum was building for lasting change, and protests attracted more and more support. In 1963, a quarter of a million Americans from many different racial backgrounds marched on the nation's capital to demand an end to racial segregation, legislation to ensure racial equality, and protection for civil rights workers from police brutality. At the center of the crowd was Martin Luther King, an Alabama pastor who delivered the speech of his life and focused the world's attention on America's struggle for racial equality. Feelings ran strongly within the African-American community, but King opposed violence and made churches the forefront of the struggle through the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The federal government recognized the powerful mood for change, and the following year, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that outlawed segregation. But in the racist South, white supremacists continued to murder African-Americans with impunity. One of the most notorious cases was the 1963 bombing of a church in Birmingham, Alabama that killed four black girls. What murdered these four girls? Look around. You will see that many people that you never thought about participated in this evil act. So tonight all of us must leave here with a bit of penitence and with a new determination to struggle. Still, King urged his followers to remain peaceful. In 1965, he was one of hundreds of demonstrators who marched from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, to demand voting rights and highlight the violent tactics being used against black activists by Alabama's government. On the day that came to be known as Bloody Sunday, the peaceful marches were attacked by police wielding batons, tear gas, and bullwhips. The brutality shocked the nation, and two and a half thousand people joined the final stretch of the march. In 1965, President Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act that gave all African Americans the vote. Tragically, an assassin gunned down the man who did so much for the struggle for racial equality on April the 4th, 1968. Martin Luther King's death marked the end of an era, but his example continues to inspire black Americans, and he's regarded as one of the greatest leaders America has ever seen.